Hi, my name is Carol Dean and I'm the owner of Southern Charm Labradoodles. Um, the reason you're watching this video is you have just adopted one of my puppies. This is to help you learn a little bit more about your puppy and how to care for your puppy and what I have given you or sent to you in the mail. Uh, you will be receiving a book. I create a book for every single puppy that is born here. It'll have your puppy's picture on the front and on the back. It has a lot of valuable information inside and it's that information that I'm going to go over with you today. As you open the book, on the inside front cover there will be a sheet and it is your home going instruction sheet. Uh, it is, I call it the cheat sheet. You can kind of read over it. It talks about a lot of different things and we're going to start with that right now. First thing we're going to talk about is um, feeding your puppy. Um, I do feed my puppies three times a day. They get fed um, Taste of the Wild dog food. I do soak it in oftentimes some uh, browned hamburger, which I add water to, and I let the, the kibble soak and stir it up. Sometimes I add cottage cheese. By the time your puppy goes home, it doesn't need any of that, but you, and you can feed it straight up dry, which is also fine. You can also add a little cottage cheese to your puppy's food, like a couple of tablespoons. Um, once a day uh, to entice them to eat or put a little cheddar cheese in there. The first couple of days your puppy goes home, he may be off its food. Um, a lot of times they worry about their litter mates and they're used to eating in a pack. They no, no longer have that comfort zone, so don't be surprised if your puppy doesn't feel like eating very much um, those first couple of days. Uh, the puppy needs to be put on your schedule. Currently the puppy is on my schedule, uh, which is not conducive for a family. Uh, I feed them usually around 7 in the morning, which probably would work, around lunchtime around 1 or 2, and then I feed them at 8 in the evening. Um, that's a little too late for a regular family. You need to feed them probably by 5 or 6. That way they can eliminate what they've eaten um, before you go to bed at 10 or 11, and you might be able to get 6 to 8 hours, which would be very helpful uh, to sleep with. So if, you know, I recommend taking the water up uh, from your puppy, maybe about 8 o'clock in the evening if you think your puppy is... Um, Thursday, you can give them an ice cube, uh, but don't feed them any food or treats, you know, past six or seven in the evening. If you're changing your puppy's food from Taste of the Wild to another dog food of your choice, and there are a lot of very good dog foods out there, and I'll discuss that with you when you come or over the phone. Uh, that are good alternatives for your dog food uh, for the Taste of the Wild. If you're interested in continuing Taste of the Wild, uh, you can Google their website, tasteofthewild.com, and um, punch in your zip code, and it will tell you what food, what companies or what stores around your immediate area sell the dog food. I will send home some samples with you, and um, you can purchase some dog food from me if you are physically able to come and pick up your puppy. Uh, if you are changing dog foods, do it gradually um, because we don't want any tummy upsets. Um, sometimes just the stress of relocating and going to a new home can cause some tummy upsets and they may have a little loose stool or, or so forth, but usually the transition goes pretty smoothly. Um, like I said, you can entice them to eat a little bit by adding you know, a little hamburger, a little turkey, a little cheddar cheese or cottage cheese to their kibble. Um, there's another product also that um, works very well. It's um, called Fresh Pet Select. It's usually found in the puppy aisle of the dog food in a refrigerator section. I wouldn't add too much of this. It smells like bologna or salami, and it is um, kind of a modified raw type diet, but it's not really draw, raw. And the dogs absolutely adore it, but you can make a little gravy with that and put it on your puppy's kibble and they will gobble it up, I promise. Uh, we're going to touch on a few other things, you know, on this cheat sheet. Um, they'll be more intensive as we go on uh, later on in the videos because um, I have separate videos on training and so forth. Uh, but some key words that you as a family need to figure out before you get your puppy home is obviously its name, and everybody needs to be on the same page with its name. You can't call it, you know, Schnooky Poo and Bella or Sam or whatever and everybody call it a different name, it's too confusing, so everybody decide on a name. Um, all the commands need to be short and concise. Sit means sit, come means come, and is always associated with something absolutely wonderful, uh, never a disciplinary action. Wait is a, a short version of stay, and I'll go into that later. Off means don't jump. It doesn't mean get down, it doesn't mean stop it, it doesn't mean anything like that. Off is off, it means don't jump. Uh, go potty. Now this word can be anything. Uh, I use go potty if they have to go potty. A lot of people have used and created a lot of other 
words such as finish, hurry up, um, go to the vines, go to the pine straw, whatever you want to use. The trick is it has to be the same word for everybody in the family. Okay, not um, dad says go poop, mom says go pee, and et cetera, et cetera. Otherwise, it's too confusing. It's like speaking five different languages to the dog. Um, as far as sleeping, you're going to need to figure out where the sleeping arrangements are going to be for your puppy um, and where the crate's going to be. Uh, if you have an upstairs and a downstairs, the puppy does need to be with you at night in your room, uh, whether it be in the crate or in your bed, and I don't care which one you do, but eat one place or another, the puppy needs to be with an earshot of you. You cannot banish the puppy to the basement or the laundry room and expect to be able to hear it. If it's got to go potty in the middle of the night, um, you have to be able to hear it whimper to allow your puppy to get out of the crate and go potty. So, you know, kind of scope out your house and see, you know, where a good place for the crate will be or a good safe place for your puppy will be. Um, a laundry room is a great place to put your puppy uh, if you have a gate. Uh, when you're going in town, let's say shopping or something like that. Otherwise, it does need to be in a confined area where it will be safe. It's like letting a two-year-old run amuck in your house, which is not a good idea, obviously. Um, when you uh, go to the veterinarian, I want you to bring your puppy book with you. That is this, pup, this book right here. Um, there is a medical data sheet, which your veterinarian will be wanting to see. Um, it looks like this in here. It'll have the vaccinations and the stickers that uh, I have given on there. It also has a business card from the veterinarian that saw your puppy and checked him out. So if there's a question, you can contact that veterinarian. It has its birthday. It has its microchip number. It has how its weights have been tracking and an accurate record of all the vaccination and heartworm medicine that I have given your puppy. So your vet will need that in order to follow up and follow through uh, later on um, with subsequent vaccinations and wormings on your puppy. Make sure when you bring um, your puppy into the vet that you bring a stool sample with you. This can be given, uh, you can take it the night before and put it in a Ziploc baggie and um, put it in a cool place. Uh, or it can be hot off the press in the morning. It's just it's, it, whatever is convenient for your family. Um, do not let the, the veterinarian give your puppy worm medicine before they do the fecal. Your puppy has been wormed diligently for every two to three weeks since I've had it. Um, also, I give a heartworm preventative at eight weeks, which usually takes care of all intestinal parasites. So the internal, you know, inside of your puppy should be pretty squeaky clean. Uh, but it is a good thing just to check, you know, with your veterinarian. Try to see your veterinarian within the first five days of your puppy going home. Uh, that is a precautionary measure. It's so that you are comfortable that the puppy is healthy. It protects me that the puppy is healthy. I know the puppy is healthy because my vet has checked it, but I need you to be reassured that everything is okay. If it goes any longer than five or six days, you know, actually I'd rather have it, you know, three or four days, uh, the puppy could have been exposed to something while in your environment, um, not in mine, and contracted something. So you really need to do it as soon as possible after getting your puppy. So try and figure out what veterinarian you're going to use and set up an appointment prior to your puppy coming home. Uh, some supplies uh, that you should have on hand with your puppy are a thermometer. And it can be a digital thermometer, a cheap digital thermometer that you get at... Um, gosh, Walmart or Target or the grocery store, uh, there's only one place it goes. And it's not in the ear and it's not in the mouth. So it needs to be, you know, you need to put it up there rectally. Uh, you can get a digital read very quickly. And normal doggy temperature is 99 to 102. If they've played outside very vigorously, they're going to be hot and you might get 104 reading. So, you know, when you're looking at a puppy and you think there's something wrong with the puppy, you know, kind of... Um, make sure that you're looking at the whole puppy and not just a single thing. Like if they've been running around playing and they collapse and they're in the house and they're tired and exhausted, obviously the puppy is just hot and tired and exhausted. Um, if the puppy is throwing up and having diarrhea and is lethargic, then that's a whole different thing. Uh, so you kind of have to look at the big picture. Uh, some other supplies is canned pumpkin. Uh, canned pumpkin is very good for diarrhea, providing it's just a little GI trouble. Tums, Kaopectate, Peptobismol are all good um, things to have on hand for diarrhea, and you have to kind of dose it appropriately, and you can contact me for that if you have a question, but it's nice to have. Um, 
Imodium with Maalox also works well for tummy upsets, and uh, Peptobismol and Peroxide and um, Betadine. Uh, Betadine is an antiseptic. It cleans cuts and scrapes and boo-boos that may come up. Peroxide also is a good wound cleaner, but it's also an emetic. And what I mean by emetic, it, it does induce vomiting. Like we give Ipecac to children if a puppy has ingested, let's say, a piece, a Lego toy, or or anything, a nickel, a coin, something like that, and you've seen the dog that has ingested something suspicious. Um, you can induce vomiting by giving a tablespoon or a couple of teaspoons of peroxide, and they will throw it up, which is a good thing to have on hand. Um, of course, you can always contact your veterinarian, but you know if it's late and you you need to do that. If it's a caustic substance, you don't want to induce vomiting. If it's a sharp substance, you don't want to induce vomiting. But those are just some handy things to have on hand at home for emergency situations on your, you know, with your puppy. Um, let's see. As far as um, vaccinations go, your puppy is going to need another round of vaccines. Not initially when you take him home. The puppy will be up to date on his vaccines at eight or nine weeks old. But three weeks from them, they will need another vaccine. And they will need a series of vaccines, a series of four more vaccines, and the last one being at 16 weeks of age. Uh, I do not recommend that your veterinarian give leptospirochetia um, at this young age. It can be given when they're over four months of age, but I've had several puppies have a very serious reaction to the vaccine. Um, I'm not saying don't give it, I'm just saying wait till the puppy is older where their immune system can handle the vaccine a little bit better. I've given your puppy Bordetella, which is a kennel cough vaccine, um, rabies vaccine, different areas of the country have different times. Uh, we require it here at four months. So around that four months mark, your puppy will probably need a one-year rabies vaccine, and your vet will talk to you about that. Uh, doggy flu vaccine, I have no opinion on. Um, I don't give it to my dogs, but your veterinary may recommend it. Again, let's push that off till the puppy is older. They're getting loaded up with vaccines, and um, you know, at the young age, sometimes their immune systems can't handle quite everything. Uh, spaying and neutering your pet. Uh, the girls usually need to be spayed and neutered, you know, probably between seven and eight months of age. The boys, depending on if they're a mini, medium, or standards. The minis and the mediums, anywhere between eight and 12 months of age. My standards um, that are, you know, 50, 60, 70 pounds, usually between 12 and 15 months of age. They're kind of a slow maturing bunch. And um, I do not do the early spay and neuter, which a lot of breeders do at seven weeks. I think that alters their growth and development and also their um, intellect. I think they need some hormones to, you know, grow and develop normally. Um, testosterone and estrogen are growth plate shut off, so it alters the growth and development of your dog. They're taller, leaner, lankier, and kind of stay an eternal puppy uh, if you prematurely castrate them. So just kind of, you know, sit tight on that. I will withhold um, registration papers until I get proof of spay and neuter. You need to send me the veterinary certificate that you have done spay and neuter, and I'll be more than happy to send you um, the registration on your puppy. Your puppies will be registered with the Australian Labrador Association of America. Uh, the puppies have been microchipped. Um, this is not a low jack. This is not a tracking device, like most men like to think it is. It is not. Uh, it is a chip. It goes between the shoulder plates, but it can migrate um, a little bit. Sometimes you can find it down on the shoulder, on the flank, you know, on the thigh. One of my dogs had it on his hip. Uh, so make sure your dog, your veterinary, your veterinarian scans the puppy to make sure the chip does come up. Every once in a while, you get a dead chip too. In your packet, you're going to see a little envelope like this um, and the little tag that goes on your dog's collar. Uh, you do need to transfer the registration over to you. I bought the chips. Right now, all the chips are registered in my name. This is a free registration. I have paid for it. So all your job is is to transfer it into your name. If you don't and the dog gets lost or stolen and the, they find it and they pick it up, um, they're going to call me and ask me to look through all my records for all my chips, and I really don't want to do that. <laughs> It'd make it my life a little bit difficult. Um, so it's, it's just an easy thing to do, and all the paperwork for you to do that is right here on the inside packet of your, uh, you know, book. The dog is, the puppy is grounded, and what I mean by grounded, um, it's grounded from high traffic dog areas, such as um, PetSmart, Petco, um, doggy daycare, uh, and dog parks, none of that. 
If you have a safe family pet, it can interact with a safe family pet. The problem is a lot of these dogs that even go to these um, facilities uh, can track in diseases to your pet that they have not been inoculated for, such as parva, which is probably the scariest one, or distemper. So it's just safer to kind of keep your dog kind of safe and away from high traffic dog areas. Um, groomer is another one. Stay away from that until they're fully vaccinated. Once they're fully vaccinated, they can, they can go and have fun and do all that. This doesn't mean that you keep your dog shut up in the house. This means that you take your dog with you pretty much everywhere you can. You can take the dog to the bank. You can take the dog to the post office. You can take the dogs to pick up kids at school, to the bus stop to Home Depot, to Lowe's. They left you in the garden section there. I take my dogs to gardening centers or feed stores, which is a wonderful way to socialize your pet. You can walk up and down strip malls. You know, let's say you have a grocery store on one end and a Target on the other. Just take your puppy to a strip mall and just kind of walk up and down the strip mall, have treats in your hand, and ask people. Um, people will, well, you won't have to ask anybody. People will gravitate to your dog, want to know what it is, want to play with it, want to pet it. You can give them a treat to give your dog. And all that is socialization. It's extremely important um, that you socialize your dog. And that will be re readdressed um, in the training segment of this, um, this series of videos that I'm producing for you. Um, a couple of other things that are important. I mean, we touched on the whole sleeping thing. Um, some families have concerns about putting the dog in your bed or sleeping with the dog. That is perfectly fine. That is a very personal thing. Um, I personally do sleep with some of my dogs. When I housebreak puppies, I often have them in the bed with me. Um, puppies will not soil the bed like people think. Uh, your husband will sleep well. Us mommies will not sleep well because <laughs> we're going to be worrying about the dog falling off the bed. The puppy will sleep like a rock because it's a comfort thing. They're used to piling on with a bunch of other dogs and so um, you know, that is perfectly fine if that's something you want to do. I would don't recommend putting the dog to sleep in with your children, though, um, because your children are not going to wake up. The puppy will kind of cry and walk around, just like if it was in the crate, it would cry and um, wake you up. Um, if that happens, you need to take the puppy out, have it do its business, and come back in. Um, whatever you do, don't make playtime. Uh, three o'clock in the morning when the puppy wakes you up to go potty and don't set your alarm clock either and again these will be touched on later another th important fact um, for families with children and puppies um, puppies love to play and your children are going to be their new peers um, the problem with that is they play bite they nip they pull they play tug of war Please don't allow your children to play tug of war with your dog. That is a dominance game and uh, that you must always win and your children are not going to be able to win that game all the time. Um, you don't want the puppy to think that they're over your children. Um, nipping needs to be deterred. You can have your children stand straight up like a tree and um, shut down, you know, kind of like this and ignore the puppy. The puppy does not want to be ignored. If you're constantly engaging a puppy by pushing them away or stop it, stop it, or, you know, leave me alone, that is engaging the puppy and that in entices the whole thing. Shutting down, walking away, or standing like a tree frozen kind of disengages the whole thing. You can also kind of, you know, as an adult, you're going to have to take the role here. Shut their mouth and go, eh, no bite. Uh, and sometimes you might have to do it a little further. Sometimes I tap them under the chin a little bit um, and they get the message pretty quickly. Anything with strings, tassels, oh boy, um, bathrobe, ties, um, that is just fun for a puppy to play with. Another very important thing, especially families with children, is you must let the puppy get its nap time in. If you don't, you're going to have a cranky puppy. And a cranky puppy can become very grouchy, just like a grouchy child. If your two or three year old was down for a nap, you wouldn't want seven year old brother to go, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, you know, you just, you, because the baby would just be irritated. That can happen with your puppy. If the puppy is asleep, let the puppy sleep. Just in, in, you know, just explain to your children, you know, puppy needs to take a nap now. If, the, if you need to put the puppy in a crate or in another room so it gets some peace and quiet away from your children, that's good. Don't let your children crawl under the furniture and pull the puppies out by the legs. Uh, you know, the puppy might get cranky and at one time, you know, retaliate just out of um, need to retaliate. And that can set up a whole nother set of problems. So... Just be respectful to the puppy's needs as far as sleep. Um, you know, when the puppy is eating, let the puppy eat. 
you know, as, you know, us adults can take food away from the puppy, that is fine. Um, but just kind of let the puppy have its, its private time when it needs to rest and also when it needs to eat. Uh, also, in the first few pages of the book, um, I have created some puppy collages, uh, and these are some pictures of the puppy that was taken here at Southern Charm, and um, you can enjoy those, and they can be found on my website too, and there'll be information about the mother and the health testing, and some puppy pictures of mama growing up, and also of dad, so you can enjoy that in your book uh, when you get it, so you can get a little history on the genealogy of your puppy. And uh, that concludes this section, and thank you very much.